one of the first tools that I think everybody should know, no matter what field you're in, in IT, cybersecurity, hacking, what have you, is Wireshark, right? Wireshark is it's a wonderful tool, and I know you've had a number of people on your channel talking about Wireshark, but let's just talk about it briefly here and just show you. Now, one of the things that you may not be accustomed to if you're coming from a different environment than Linux is that in Linux, you can oftentimes, most times, not all the times, but most of the time, simply type the name of the tool you want to use in the command shell and it'll open it up. Of course, you also have the option of using a menu system here, right? And you can go ahead and search around for your Wireshark or whatever. You can type in Wireshark here and find the link to it. And there it is right there. You can see it, okay? But we're gonna just use it from the command line. And we're just gonna go, just go sudo Wireshark. Sudo because we need root privileges to do certain things in Wireshark. So let's go ahead and put our password in. For those of you who aren't familiar, sudo gives us root privileges in Linux. And so the first thing you're gonna come up with in the, when you open up the Wireshark, it says Wireshark Network Analyzer. Those of you who might be taking some of the certification exams out there, CEH, SEC Plus, what have you, um, you might run across the term protocol analyzer. All right, so that often is used to describe Wireshark as a protocol analyzer or a network analyzer. You can see that as I open it up, it's showing me the possible interfaces, and you can see the activity, and there's one that says any interface, and the other one says ETH0, right? ETH0 is Ethernet0, our first Ethernet adapter. Remember that in computers, we always start counting at zero, not at one. So every, the first item in the list is always zero, not one. That takes some getting used to if you're not, uh, if you haven't been part of this world. Let's go ahead and click there and it'll begin to show me the packets that are coming across that interface. If I don't see any packets coming across the interface, I can always create some by, say, just going to opening up a browser. There we go. You can start to see the packets coming across there now. Uh, it took a little delay there. This is, this is Wireshark, and what it's doing is it's sniffing the packets going across, in my case here, ETH0, the Ethernet adapter, and the first Ethernet adapter. You might have more than one Ethernet adapter, in which case they would be called Ethernet 1. The second one would be called Ethernet 1. The third one would be called Ethernet 2. Okay. And these, this is the live feed of packets that it's sniffing, okay. and it shows over here, the number of the packet, these are just simply a number starting with one, right? and we're already up to about 10, 9,900 9, packets. The time since the initiation, since you've opened up Wireshark, course IP address, the destination IP address, the protocol that it's using, the length of the packet, and then some, some simple description of the packet, including you can see here the sequence numbers, you can see whether or not there's a flag set on it. And of course, you know that when we have a three-way handshake that the first packet has a syn flag and then a syn act and then an act and all the packets after that. And that's what's going on over here. We can go ahead and pick any one of these packets. I just clicked on one. And then what that allows me to do then is to go ahead and analyze that packet. And I can, I can dig deep into that packet and see everything that's going on inside of it. And this is where I can go ahead and you can see here is a TCP. I expanded it by clicking on the little button there and it'll show me all the key information. And this is not a Wireshark class, but I just wanted to kind of demonstrate simply what it can do. And then you see there's the ACK numbers. You know, if you know a little bit of TCP, there's the relative sequence number. And then over here, we have the, the payload in hexadecimal. That's one of those skills that you need to know, folks, right? You need to know a little bit of hexadecimal. And then over here, we have an in ASCII, right? So if I were to open up my browser and go to my favorite website, right? Which of course is Hackers Arise, right? I will see it come across the screen. It comes, first of all, it comes to the browser, and then we'll see it come over here. So here we did it. What we've done is we've searched for the content of the payload, all right, looking for the word hackers, 
and you can see that it's pulled up here. You can see right here, hackers arise, and over here it's in hex. All right, so we're just looking for that one key word. That's all we're looking for. So it's that's real basic. One of the things that you want to do if you're using Wireshark is that you want to be able to know how to analyze. And you know, if you're new to networking and cybersecurity, you may not know what to look for and how to create filters. These are called filters up here. We're just trying to take out certain packets and, and just look at them and analyze them. You can see here is analyze, okay? And it says display filter expression right here. What this does is opens up a window and here you can see the thousands of fields that you can search for, all right? So, you know, th these literally, there's thousands of fields that you can search for in, uh, in Wireshark. And let's just go quickly to just like TCP, which is you know, most of what we're doing. Yeah, uh, let's go here. The TCP transmission control protocol right there. And then you can see all of the fields within TCP that I can search for. So for instance, TCP flags are equal to SID. That would be the opening of a TCP connection. It creates a filter for you. I click on it, I can go over here and say the relation, it defaults to equal equal, which means that it's set, okay, to SID. In other words, it's one, okay. Here's the value one and it says here set. If I go ahead and click on that, it creates a filter and then we'll filter for all of the packets that have SIN flag set on it. All right, let's go ahead and hit that. And now I've got all of the SIN flag packets, right? So we can go, we can dig really deep into every packet to determine what's going on in those packets. And this is an essential, I would say essential tool for anybody who's working within the field of cybersecurity, networking, what had. So that's tool number one. I'm gonna ask you a question that I think a lot of people will be asking um, Occupy the Web. So I'm gonna ask hopefully a lot of like um, beginner questions or questions that the audience might have. And the first thing I'm gonna say is like, Occupy the Web, this is not hacking. This is protocol analysis. Why do I need to learn this? Well, you know, some if you're looking about, it's not hacking really. The only part that you could really use Wireshark for, for hacking is to sometimes to analyze, well, first of all, if passwords are being passed unencrypted, okay, in plain text, you, you can see them in Wireshark, right? But if you're trying to understand, say, a hack, so somebody's already hacked, you compromised your system, and you're trying to understand what they did, this is the first step that you would go. If you capture the packets, and then you begin to analyze what they did. So I would agree that it's not hacking, but it's part of the analysis um, tool set that you use both as a network engineer or cybersecurity. So if I'm if I'm sitting here on the defensive side and I'm being compromised, the first tool I'm going to open is probably going to be Wireshark because I want to understand what that hacker just did to my system. And I can see all of that in Wireshark. Is it also true to say that if yeah, the problem a lot of, we see it a lot within the cybersecurity space that a lot of people who are new just want to jump straight ahead and like they want to run before they can even crawl. And this helps you make sure that you learn what's actually happening on the wire. So you actually understand the protocols that you perhaps trying to hack. I, I would agree a hundred percent. I mean, if you, if you don't really understand TCP IP, you know, it's going to be hard for you to be a successful hacker. You know, you might be able to, you know, use some of the simple tools and you know, maybe compromise somebody's Wi-Fi, what have you. But if you really want to advance and become really adept in this field, you got to understand TCP IP and Wireshark's going to help you because it's yeah. showing you all the information about what's happening on your wire or somebody else's wire. And... That way you're going to better learn how these protocols work and how they are equipped. Now, one of the things that is important to note is that most of what goes on in TCP IP or the other protocols yes, is all defined by what are called RFCs, requests for comments. And these requests for comments or RFCs define how the protocols should talk to each other. 
right? How they can communicate. It's like agreeing that, you know, in this case here, we're agreeing that our protocol is has been defined by English, right? <laughs> and if we're both not speaking English, we're going to have a hard time communicating. Exactly. That's what... That's what a protocol does or an RFC does to a protocol. It says, okay, we're all going to agree to speak the same language. And here's the rules of the language. And those are defined by RFC. So you can begin to understand how these protocols are defined by analyzing the protocols in Wireshark. It's also important to note that as a hacker, you can defy the protocols. You can defy the RFCs. You don't have to follow the RFCs. The RFCs are designed for people who want to successfully communicate. <laughs> if, you, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not caring, if you don't care about successfully communicating, you can create packets that are not compliant with these rules. And sometimes that can be really helpful to you because by creating packets that are not complying with these rules, sometimes you can get information or get the system to do things that it wasn't intended to do. Now, a really good tool for doing packets that don't meet the uh, RFCs are something like HPing3. Uh, HPing3 will allow you to create packets of just about any type. And right now, HPing3 has become one of the, the hackers most important DDoS tools right now. We're seeing a lot of DDoSs coming from HPing because it allows us to create a packet that defies all of the protocols and the rules of those protocols, which are often they're referred to as RFCs. So I would say that the first thing you need to do is you need to understand networking protocols and Wireshark's the tool to do that, all right? I agree. Okay, good. <laughs> all right, I'm going to close down my Wireshark, and uh, I'm going to, all right. So when I'm closing down Wireshark, I can stop and quit without saving, or I can stop and save. This would be saving all the packets that I can use for later analysis. So I don't have to necessarily do my analysis in real time. I can just open up Wireshark, and it'll automatically save the packets for me, and then I can analyze them at at my leisure, you know, whether that be tomorrow or next week, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop without saving. 